so now uh, we want our player to move so let's click on our player and we want to add a rigid body to it because we will use like basically the physics uh, from the unity to move it instead of changing the position each frame so let's add a rigid body 2d it's very important because it's a 2d game and we have to change few properties so the body type will be kinematic so we basically we'll be man manipulating it through the scripts and that's why it's kinematic uh, if this would be some kind of like falling ball that we don't have control over then it would be a, d a dynamic body type but now if we control it over the scripts we want to use kinematic so we have a greater control okay so next next thing we want to do is check the useful kinematic context and we will not discuss it now but thanks to that we uh, will be able to collide with the other walls so you can bounce off them and uh, leave the simulated on because we want this to collide with other things we just want to control it over the script so now after we have it done we can add the new script called player controller so this script will be responsible for moving our player so let's double click it and let's open it so i want to start from the scratch so let's delete everything and I know that we, we will not use system.collections and generic, so we can delete them also. So we have this blank script. So let's start from the variables. So first thing we, we need is the data about our input. So just let's write a variable for it called input data. And it changed my i to be capital and I don't want that. Uh, second variable we we need is uh, move speed. So you have a float called move speed, and we can change it in the inspector. Oh my god, what was that? And maybe let's assign it to five by default. Okay, and also we need for now a few private variable. So we will need vector free called m underscore clicked pos so this will contain the position where we clicked our mouse and we will need the second like the second one like this but when we release it so we call it release pos and we will need one more for storing the direction so let's call it M that dear sharp for direction okay guys so uh, you may uh, be wondering why I use M underscore and this basically just uh, it is a naming convention that I use and it's very requested not requested uh, recommended by official uh, language name conventions by Microsoft and uh, M it basically mean, means member so I use it to to define which variables are private so whenever I script I use some variables I just just need to look at them and I exactly know which one are public which one are uh, private so in for public ones I don't use nothing before the name for private I use m um, underscore and for local variables I use just underscore so it uh, it means member but I call it my because uh, it's it's better for me so uh, we will need uh, also our rigid body uh, reference so let's call it rigid body 2d variable and let's call it m that rigid 2d and d will be capital okay so what else I think for now it's everything so let's go to start so let's create a start because we deleted it will be void start 
and in start I want to get components for uh, for our rigid body. So we have we will have a method called get components and don't mix it with the built one from the Unity that is called get component. This will be our own private uh, method that I called get component. Get components. And basically here I will get all the components that I need. So I need a reference for rigid body, so I will assign it by writing get component rigid body 2D like this. And for now this is everything that we need. So let's go down and let's write update function. And in update we will need to handle our movement. So I will have a method called handle movement and I want to call it within inside update function. So let's call it handle movement. And now what, what do we want to do in handle movement? So basically we want to read the input data and based on that we want to calculate the, the direction so first let's check if we press the mouse button so it will be very easy so just write if and we want to access our input data variable that we uh, defined at the beginning and we want to get into this pressed boolean so if this is true so you can write like this or you can have without checking the condition so this basically means if this is true but for the purpose of the tutorial, I will write the longer ver version. So if we press the mouse button, what do we want to do? We want to calculate the direction of our uh, mouse position. So we have a variable for storing the position. And now uh, we want to assign some position. And to get that position, we need to access the camera because the, our camera knows which, uh, where, where did we click our mouse. So we can write camera.main because uh, we want to access the main camera and we want to get into this method that is called screen to world point. And we want to pass our car current mouse position so we can write input that mouse position And basically input that mouse position will get the uh, current mouse position of our mouse <laughs> but it will get it in screen uh, coordinates so it will return the pixel uh, coordinates not word coordinates so uh, I can show it to you like this so if I write debug that log and I want to debug the position of the mouse so let's go back to the scene view and now if I go to the console and let's click here so you can see that if I click ah, first I forgot to assign the, the script to the, to the player so let's go to the player and let's drag player controller on it it needs the input data so we will provide an input data one and let's now go to the game so as you can see I have a player and its position is minus one minus one 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 point five minus zero point five and if I click on the player you can see that it debugged me 280 by 161 and basically it is the position of our mouse position but in pixel coordinates and we want to change it to the world coordinates so it will match the same as uh, unity coordinates so there's a and that's why we use the function called screen to world, world point because now it will it will change it to be correct so now if I want to debug that log and the click position it will be correct 
So now it's minus 1.4. So if I click on it, you can see that we get something close to it, very similar. Minus 1.5, minus 0 0.3. So that's that is the reason why we use why we use our uh, function called screen to world, po world point. And as you can see, the default position for the z value is minus 10, and we don't want that because uh, it will basically make our ball disappear later because minus 10 is more behind than the camera position because camera is at minus 10 and if we want to change our position our ball to be minus 10 then the ball will not be visible so we want to zero it out so that's why after we define the click position we want to write end of click position it will be equals to new vector free and we will assign each value to be the same so we will write m click that position that x m click that position that y but the z value we want it to be zero so we will write zero and now we will have the correct position so another another thing is that camera main uh, it's very handy but it's not very optimized and it's very heavy for unity so we don't want this uh, camera reference uh, we don't we, we don't want re to reference the camera by this way we want to cache it so we will need a variable for it so let's write under the rigid body camera and let's call it end of cam so this will store our camera position Let's go to the get component and let's write m.cam equals to and we want to write find object of type and we want to find camera and we use find object of type because uh, our camera is not uh, on the same game object as our player controller. So now instead of writing m.camera we can write m.cam.screen to world point and that's how we get position. So we want to do the same with the release bu mouse button. So now we want to write if input data that is release, if this is true, then we want to do the same. So I will copy this whole block and I'll paste it here but we want to change the variable to be m.release position and also here and let it be also here and also here and here so now we have two positions for the uh, position where we clicked and position where we released the mouse button so now one more thing we want to do is calculate the direction. So based on that, we want to calculate the direction. So let's write a separate function called calculate direction. And now we want to assign our to our di direction vector, the direction that we Created. So to calculate the direction, we just need to subtract the final position from our initial position. So our final position is release pause, and we want to subtract subtract the initial position, which is our M clicked position, and we want to normalize it so it will have the length of one. So this. This basically will be the pure direction. So you have to wrap it inside the brackets. No, into the parentheses and at the end you just write dot normalize. So this will return our normalized vector. So after we calculate the direction we want to call it here inside our release so when we release our mouse we just want to calculate the direction 
and we also want to move our player. So let's write the name of the method that we'll create in a few seconds. So it will be called move player in direction. And dear is chart for direction because I always like to write that way. Or maybe this time I'll write direction. So now let's copy the name. It will be a void type. So void move player in direction. And we just want to add a, change the velocity of our rigid body. So let's access our rigid body variable and let's write velocity. And we want to assign uh, the direction that we created. So it will be m dot direction. And we want to multiply it by the speed variable that we created at the beginning. So now we have this will basically move our player. So let's go back to the project view and let's see how it works. Okay, so let's click the position and let's uh, see if it moves. So I click here and I will release it here. So it should move to the right. And as you can see, the ball moves to the right. And now if I click it here and move it down, it should move down. Now move it up, move it left, and you can see that it's working. So the problem is that our player needs to reset its position when we press our mouse button. So uh, we will do it in the next part. So thank you guys and we'll see you i will see you in the next part goodbye uh, re also remember to save your file uh, your project